Mm-hmm. My name is Lucille Garcia. Lucille Davis Garcia. Esther Ram. Esther Garcia Ramsey. This is my mother. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I was, like I said, I was uh, born here in New Braunfels, Texas, and uh, att- uh, graduated from Braunfels High School, and uh, I've just been a part of uh, the here in New Braunfels. So. And uh, my grandfather. When they bought this land here in 1900, he paid the first $25. This land cost $125, and it's on the deed, and that was in 1900. But we also started our church in 1890 down on the corner of Carmel and Castile, and that was in 1890, and they stayed there for 10 years and then moved over here, brought property over here in 1900 and built this church. It was a house, and they organized the church down on the corner of Castile and uh, Camel. It's it's right there as you turn, coming down Camel, and you turn right, right there by uh, the motor. They have cars there. I think it's... uh, what motor company is that? that? Well, it used to be. And they think it's no bonnet. It's no bonnet now. Okay. Well, it's right behind where the blue bonnet okay. place is. It was on, the, on that corner, and it was a house. And uh, they organized the church there, and they stayed there 10 years until they got money to buy this property and moved here. I was cornerstone out there tells it was March the 1st in 1900. And we just... Uh, been in this church for that long, and uh, they did an article by J.P. Uh, Pierce, Reverend uh, Pierce, Clancy. He was here in 1936, and he stayed here for eight years. His two kids, he had, they had two children, a boy and a girl, and they graduated from the old Booker T. Washington School down on Kamal Street. And then they they moved on, you moved on. But uh, I was born and raised here in this church, baptized and everything. And I'm 88 years old. And this is this is my church. <laughs> and uh, I remember in '36, I remember J.C. Pierce. They lived in the back in the little parsonage, and it was he and his wife and, and two kids. And then we had a, um, a minister that was graduated from this school, from, from uh, New Brownwood High School, was also our minister, Reverend E.H. Millett. Mm-hmm. He was our pastor. And uh, his wife and children were his daughter. One of his daughters is still a member, Ann Irvin. She's still a member of this church. And uh, it goes way back in uh, the history of the churches that we used to have a large membership. We had like 60, 70 members here at the church. But uh, the Church of Christ came here, started church here, and they hit us with about 40 members. And then they went over to Live Oak, and they did Live Oak. They got about 30 members from over at Live Oak. And uh, it, was try- it was hard trying to get the church rebuilt because... Uh, we had good members, and they left, and then we had quite a few of them to pass on, you know. And uh, the Coleman's, they, they were here, and he had children, and his family, you know. And uh, my sisters had children, and they were here. And, and then, too, when they graduated from high school and uh, got jobs up, they, they moved on. They they moved, got married, and moved away from home. Uh-huh. Went to college, went off. Uh-huh. Went to college and everything, and so our church is small in in, in membership now. And uh, uh, just like I said, from thirty six on up, I remember, I remember the ministers that that was here, and uh, we had uh, E. D. Johnson and his wife, and he had they had one daughter, Rose. They lived here. Had C. S. Marshall. They he was from San Antonio, and he had a uh, they had a wife. He had a wife and a boy and a girl, Mary and Cleo. 
and uh, we and pre, we have like uh, presiding elders in the United Methodist Church. I think they call them as uh, they don't call them as uh, they call them superintendents. I think, but we call ours presiding elders. And I remember all the presiding elders that we had and uh, worked with them and the ministers and my mother was secretary of the church and she passed away in in uh, 69 and I was nominated to take her place and I've been secretary ever since 69 here at the church and uh, the the ministers some stayed four years, some stayed two years, some stayed six years the longest one that we had was Reverend Lewis and he stayed here 20 years and uh, he didn't live here. He lived in San Antonio, but uh, he was he was here on Sundays and through the week. And uh, we have elders. We had uh, in all the years that we had one one lady as a presiding elder that I can remember, and she just retired in I think sixteen. But all the others were were, were men, and uh, we would have the annual conference, and we have different uh, programs. They call them like now we have our uh, Founders Day coming up here in February, and uh, the churches tax so much money. You have to pay so much for this and for that, and uh, we have a presiding elder. We have to pay his salary. He has a salary. The church has to pay. We pay uh, the upkeep of the district. I mean, it's uh, different. Back there, we had this member, Mr. Uh, Monroe Johns. He lived about two blocks from my house. And we would call it class leaders. And we would go to the members, and they paid so much per week. And he would maybe give us 15 cents this week and a dime for his wife, you know. And then sometimes he would give 25 cents or 50 cents. And they would always talk about, we call him Uncle Monroe. They always talked about him saying, Uncle Monroe has all that money, and that's all he pays, you know, is that. <laughs> but when he died, he left Alan Chapel in his will. Mm-hmm. And... uh he was his wife passed first, and then he passed away. And uh, it's it's hard sometimes when you just don't have the uh, the members. Like I know things change, but uh, when you people now look at what what you can pay, you know what you can give, not. Just coming and giving your service, but it's a tax thing that you play, you know, like tax base. And uh, just like I said, we had uh, two, James Valentine was our uh, minister once for two years, and then he ended up being our presiding elder. And, uh, and we've had two, three, we've had. Sister uh, Reverend uh, Copeland is our third lady that we have had as pastor. We've had all men, but we had uh, Miss Williams, and then we had Patricia Shenard and Reverend Copeland. That's the only three. In in the years that I've been here, that's the only three that that we've had. We've had all all men. She was our pastor. Her husband was first, James G. Williams. He was the pastor here first, and then uh, they he got sick, and then they and she was a good one, uh, Miss Williams, Reverend Williams. She was a good minister, and uh, and she stayed, I think, two years, two or three years with us, and uh, and she was the first lady that we had as a as a minister, and then we got. Reverend Shenard. She stayed one year, I think. And then Reverend Kovner. Like she was saying, uh, Reverend Williams, when Mrs. Early, Reverend Early Williams, when she came, well, her husband had been mm-hmm. our prior, you know, minister. 
so uh, we were very much familiar with her, you know, and uh, we had, uh, you know, it was like when she was here, it was just like she was pastoring also because they were, you know, husband. usually when you have a husband and wife, now a lot of times that you have, you'll have a minister, and he's married the next day, you know, his wife is also the minister. So, I mean, this was like, uh, I guess it started years way back then. What was the, I think, what was it back in the 80 degrees? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So this was like um, something new, I guess, you know, the husband and wife being both ministers. But she wasn't, she, was, uh-huh. she, she wasn't at the time, but mm-hmm. she was, a, you know, she was, you knew she was going to eventually have a calling because she was just that type of a person that she was a good God, God-fearing person, you know, and uh, she came alone, and she also came from, her father was also a minister. Mm-hmm. So, um, and he came, and he was also a sublime. sublime, and then he was also a member here also. So we had all three of them. So um, it was, you know, family, you know. And um, we didn't have didn't have any, any problem mm-hmm. next time she came along. She did. Not when she Not when she was here, but then we did have one next one came along. <laughs> We the next one we had, we had <laughs> we didn't problems. Have problems, so we had bad yeah. problems. Yeah, so you know that that just goes with it, you know. You know. Uh, I have a man in the district, okay. basically. Um, what's the of the district? Um, we're in San Antonio district, and um, I think there's a surplus of 20 churches in our district. Probably. About 20 churches, and so they manage the 20 churches within the district. <laughs> Our state district is the 10th district. It's the 10th Episcopal district of the AME Church. And that is governed by Bishop Max Ty McKenzie. And on the programs, you will see her name on the front of the program. And then you will see the, her husband or the husband, which is called a supervisor. If, whether it's a female or male, mm-hmm. it's a supervisor. So it's a bishop supervisor. And then you will see the presiding elder's name. And the... Uh, um, so the Reside Elder manages the smaller district of the state district. We just got a new presiding elder. And so today's program, you will notice the name is different. That was last year's mm-hmm. anniversary program, and so it had presiding elder King. But at our annual conference in October, Reverend King, uh, presiding elder King retired, and we have a new elder, Raymond Bryant. And so at the annual conferences is where all the changes within the district are made. Mm-hmm. This is the last church heading towards the Austin district. So this is the uh, no, not the, the north the most northern church in the yes. San Antonio district. Yes, in the yes. San Antonio district. That is correct. That's the correct. The most northern church in the San Antonio district. So we're and then and San then Martin next to San Martin is, is, uh, Austin. It's Austin. Austin. Uh, district. So the district splits here. That's correct. And this goes all the way to Kingsville, um, Corpus Christi, and um, it stops right before Houston. Mm-hmm. The in that, that area. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had one church in San Antonio uh, uh, that really helped us. Uh, when Reverend Lewis was here, he would ask some of the churches in San Antonio to come, and uh, we being a small church didn't want to, but uh, we had St. Was it at St. James Reverend uh, Robinson. Robinson? He was Caucasian, but he married a, a black woman, and they had children and everything, and he was an AME minister. And uh, we would have like homecoming and he would come to us every year and we always paid the speaker we gave a donation of two hundred dollars you know for coming and a hundred and fifty or whatever but Reverend Robinson never would accept it because he said it's churches like you all that made the big churches Mm -hmm. and he said I do not want any and he came to us about 13 years, and we would always go, he wouldn't accept anything, so I went over to, I would go over to the smokehouse and give him packages of different things, and that's what he looked forward to, and he said, don't do that, you're spending too much money, 
But that's what we wanted to do for him because he helped us out, regardless of what we asked Reverend Robinson for. He did. But the other churches, I mean, they were kind of snubbish. They didn't want to come to a small church, you know. And uh, it, it, it's a... Uh, we didn't feel bad about it because we said that uh, we were doing fine, you know, the way we were, and we had Reverend Robinson on our side, you know. And uh, But there are some churches that look down on small churches. 